This video is about the exponent rules, rules that govern expressions like 2 to the 5th or x to the n. 2 to the 5th is just shorthand for 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, written 5 times. And similarly, x to the n is just x multiplied by itself n times. When we write these expressions, the number on the bottom that's being multiplied by itself is called the base. And the number at the top, telling us how many times we're multiplying the base by itself, is called the exponent. Sometimes the exponent is also called the power. The product rule says that if I have x to the power of n times x to the power of m, that's the same thing as x to the n plus m power. In other words, when I multiply two expressions with the same base, then I can add their exponents. For example, if I have 2 cubed times 2 to the 4th, that's equal to 2 to the 7th. And that makes sense because 2 cubed times 2 to the 4th means I multiply 2 by itself 3 times, and then I multiply that by 2 multiplied by itself 4 times, and in the end, I have 2 multiplied by itself 7 times, which is 2 to the 7th. I'm just adding up the number of times it's multiplied in each piece to get the number of times it's multiplied total. The quotient rule says that if I have x to the n power divided by x to the m power, that's equal to x to the n minus m power. In other words, if I divide two expressions with the same base, then I can subtract their exponents. For example, 3 to the 6th divided by 3 squared is going to be 3 to the 6 minus 2, or 3 to the 4th. And this makes sense because 3 to the 6th means I multiply 3 by itself 6 times, and then I divide that by 3 multiplied by itself twice. So when I cancel out 3's, I have 4 3's left. Notice that I have to subtract the number of 3's on the bottom from the number of 3's at the top to get my number of 3's remaining. That's why I subtract my exponents. The power rule tells us if I have x to the n power raised to the m power, that's the same thing as x to the n times m power. In other words, when I raise a power to a power, I get to multiply the exponents. For example, 5 to the 4th cubed is equal to 5 to the 4 times 3, or 5 to the 12th. And this makes sense, because 5 to the 4th cubed can be thought of as 5 to the 4th times 5 to the 4th times 5 to the 4th. Expanding this out some more, that's 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times the same thing times the same thing again. So I have three groups of four fives, which is a total of three times four, or twelve fives. The next rule involves what happens when I raise a number or a variable to the zeroth power. It turns out that anything to the zeroth power is equal to one. Usually this is just taken as a definition, but here's why it makes sense to me. If you have something like 2 cubed divided by 2 cubed, well, certainly that has to equal 1. Anything divided by itself is just 1. But using the quotient rule, we know that this is the same thing as 2 to the 3 minus 3. Because when we divide two things with the same base, we get to subtract their exponents. Therefore, this is the same thing as 2 to the 0. So 2 to the 0 has to equal 1 in order to make it work with the quotient rule. And the same argument shows that anything to the 0 power has to be equal to 1. What happens when we take something to a negative power? x to the n is equal to 1 over x to the n. 
Again, most people just take this as a definition of a negative exponent, but here's why it makes sense. If I take something like 5 to the 7th times 5 to the negative 7th, then by the product rule, this has to equal 5 to the 7 plus negative 7, which is 5 to the 0, and we just said that that is equal to 1. Now I have the equation 5 to the 7th times 5 to the negative 7th equals 1. If I divide both sides by 5 to the 7th, I get that 5 to the negative 7th has to equal 1 over 5 to the 7th. So that's where this rule about negative exponents comes from. It has to be true in order to be consistent with the product rule. Finally, let's look at fractional exponents. What does an expression like x to the 1 over n really mean? Well, it means the nth root of x. For example, 64 to the 1 third power means the cube root of 64, which happens to be 4. And 9 to the 1 half means the square root of 9, which is usually written without that little superscript up there. Now the square root of 9 is just 3. Fractional exponents also make sense. For example, if I have 5 to the 1 third and I cube that, then by the power rule that's equal to 5 to the 1 third times 3, which is just 5 to the 1 or 5. So in other words, 5 to the 1 third is the number that when you cube it you get 5. And that's exactly what's meant by the cube root of 5. The cube root of 5 is also a number that when you cube it, you get 5. The next rule tells us we can distribute an exponent over a product. In other words, if we have a product x times y all raised to the nth power, that's equal to x to the n times y to the n. For example, 5 times 7 all raised to the third power is equal to 5 cubed times 7 cubed. And this makes sense because 5 times 7 all raised to the cube power can be expanded as 5 times 7 times 5 times 7 times 5 times 7. But if I rearrange the order of multiplication, this is the same thing as 5 times 5 times 5 times 7 times 7 times 7, or 5 cubed times 7 cubed. Similarly, we could distribute an exponent over a quotient. If we have the quotient x over y all raised to the n power, that's the same as x to the n over y to the n. For example, 2 sevenths raised to the fifth power is the same thing as 2 to the fifth over 7 to the fifth. This makes sense because 2 sevenths to the fifth can be expanded as 2 sevenths multiplied by itself 5 times, which can be written rewritten as 2 multiplied by itself 5 times divided by 7 multiplied by itself 5 times. And that's 2 to the fifth over 7 to the fifth as wanted. We've seen that we can distribute an exponent over multiplication and division. But be careful because we cannot distribute an exponent over addition or subtraction. For example, a plus b to the n is not generally equal to a to the n plus b to the n. A minus b to the n is not generally equal to a to the n minus b to the n. And if you're not sure, just try an example with numbers. For example, 2 plus 3 squared is not the same thing as 2 squared plus 3 squared. And 2 minus 3 squared is definitely not equal to 2 squared minus 3 squared. In this video, I gave eight exponent rules which I'll list again here. There's the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, the zero exponent, the negative exponent, the fractional exponent, and the other two rules involving distributing exponents across multiplication and division. In another video, I'll use these exponent rules to rewrite and simplify expressions involving exponents.